So I realized I left out a huge and important uh, detail when it comes to how I have been able to keep an active lifestyle and how I've been able to have a somewhat healthy relationship to food. I am I think me and food will always will always be a battle between you know healthy and not healthy. It's I think that's that's something I've accepted and I feel like I'm doing very very well considering like all the other all the other diets and, and pill popping and all that stuff that I used to do like so I feel like I'm in a very healthy relationship hi hair and um, considering where I've been at you know I'm on the keto diet but I allow myself cheat meals you know but then there was yesterday when I decided to make like uh, some chocolate chip cookies from the tasty website oh my. Mm. I posted the video that stated why I feel like diet and exercise as your New Year's resolution doesn't work because it's about the baby steps. When you go from doing nothing to all in, you are almost always going to burn out, fall off the bandwagon, hate yourself for it, and then it just you you are like worse off than you started because you get all you think that you aren't strong enough to do this and you and you get frustrated that you can't like you can't make it stick and and all those things and you know if you think about a relationship to a person you know you don't go from nothing to being married with five kids you know what I'm saying? You, it's it's baby steps. It's a gradual thing. You know, I think that's why sometimes some people who get pets return their pets because they go from nothing to a pet, and sometimes that's overwhelming, especially if the pet is difficult to work with for whatever reason, or if it's just they don't they don't match. You know, uh, like the owner and the dog just don't the I guess it's like a personality difference or something. Like it doesn't work really well. You know, so you have to take diet and exercise the same way. It's baby steps. At least that has been what has worked for me. I've had struggles with my weight and with food since I was young, like young, you guys. And, um, and I mentioned that in that video. So I want to tell you guys the number one thing that has helped me and I feel will help you. And that is to remain always with a positive mind and with a in and in a positive environment you know i always say like like taking the higher road what i mean by that is that many times we are on this path to betterment and those around us aren't on that same path and so sometimes it's a struggle because we have all of our friends right and we want to try doing something a little bit different i'm not going to say that that we're so much better because we're doing this active lifestyle and healthy eating but we do kind of go on our own little path trying to be healthy and active and the problem with that is here we're trying to do this on our own you know sometimes friends will join it with us whatever but like the majority of our friends have stayed the same while we're trying to change right and while there's many times where you can balance that, you can balance, you know, the old habits of the things that you have done with friends, like eating unhealthy and stuff. It's hard though. Like it's hard to start a diet and then like be invited to a girl's night out or to some sort of party or whatever, where there's the, all the foods, all your triggering foods right there in front of you. For me, my triggering foods are carbs and especially chocolate, but like any kind of carbs. You lay out crackers and I'm like, oh, thanks, you know, I'll take a handful. You have to go, okay, you know, I can go to this party and maybe I can bring my own snacks. You know, I can bring the whatever, or you can say, you know what, maybe I'll allow this to be my cheat meal for the week or something like that. It is an adjustment and you have to constantly remind yourself that this is an adjustment and you have to remind yourself that just because you're making this change, your friends around you are probably not going to be making that same change too. It's funny, I'm on the keto diet and my friend is doing my fitness pal and a group of us decided to go to Chewy's, which is a Mexican restaurant just down the road. And my friend and I got there first and we're sitting there at the table and we're looking at the menu and 
we kind of turned to each other and I was like, yeah, there's like nothing on this menu that that fits my keto diet. And she goes, yeah, and I'm noticing a lot of these uh, a lot of these meals are are more calories than I should have today. It was one of those things where, you know, we're going to be put in situations like this, so how are we going to make it work? Okay. This is like another another thing that I feel is very serious and yet it won't sound serious but like when you really think about it it's something that should be noted and should be a conscious awareness of yours and that is to remain out of situations that make you overly emotional and if you're an emotional eater like I am, when you're feeling like crud or you're super stressed, you know, like you're like me and you go to the ice cream store or you go look in your cabinets and see what kind of cookies you can make. You have to, okay, that is where it's really difficult to note where situations harm you. And I know I haven't mentioned this much, but that was one thing that uh, helped me understand my religious trauma syndrome, was that I would be coming home every day from church very, very overwhelmed, and I would find myself then on any diet, whatsoever diet it was, I would find myself spending the rest of the day eating exceptionally unhealthy to hide the feelings that I had. A lot of times we don't see what, how situations are affecting us because it's one of those things that we, we just kind of, you know, we just kind of do. We don't see that it, that it is something that's negative. It's something that we probably should remove out of our, our life or find a way to, to change it. I know there are times when we are put in situations that we can't get out of. And that is where I'm like a huge proponent on shielding yourself. You know, I firmly believe absolutely everything in this world is made up of energy everything you know if I want to send you love I can send you love and you can feel it if you're receptive you know what I mean because it's all energy that's all it is and so I believe that if you envision yourself with a shield around you a shield of protection and you say that this is my shield and if you want you can pray pray and say I need angels around me to shield me or however you want to whatever resonates you know, within you, um, that you can say, so when this person comes at me with their negative energy or with their negative words, that I pray or that I visualize that those words and that energy will bounce off me and hit them and go back to them because that's where it came from. So I do feel like if we're put in nasty situations that we can't get out of, we can find ways to protect ourselves. When you get on an airplane, the flight attendant always says that if by any chance the oxygen masks have to be lowered that you put it on yourself first before you go helping your children or whoever else is in need. You have to make sure in life that your oxygen mask is always on, that you are okay. You have to understand that if you are not okay, the worlds of those who need you will not be okay. So take that time for yourself to, to put yourself at a higher vibration. I, I try like to get positive, to be positive and to be in a more positive state. Um, sometimes that does require distancing yourself from friends, from situations and saying no. Okay, like make the word no like your favorite word. It's almost like you need to be exceptionally protective of yourself. Think of a person you love more than anything, right? And then imagine what you would do if you knew that person was being hurt or attacked by someone or something. Like, how would you feel? What would you do to prevent that from happening, right? That conviction needs to be for yourself as well. And you have to make sure that you're at a higher place. And being at a higher place, you'll find that you're not rummaging around in this lower, murkier place that keeps you 
eating emotionally or keeps you feeling bad which has you eating emotionally. The journey for me for healthiness has been a long one but it's been one that I've learned a lot from and I worry I don't say it right you know when I talk to you guys because I do just kind of talk in circles or I talk like one long run-on sentence but I'm grateful for the experience. Now I wanted to state something that I, I worry I worry there's a misunderstanding. I show my before and after photos and, and how I looked back years ago. And I was not ugly. I was not fat. I was not any of those things. I don't, I didn't, I was not anything negative. I was beautiful. I was beautiful. I was funny. I still am funny. I was, you know, a good person. I don't think I was as good of a person as I am today. I had to learn. I had to see myself for how I really was and I had to change some things, that's for sure. But I was doing my best with what I had and with what I knew. But I wasn't healthy and I did not feel healthy and I did not feel okay. And I was resorting to diet pills, to crash diets. I was medicated, I was on the wrong medication for depression. It made me a zombie. I would lay on the couch, I had three kids. I would just lay on the couch because like I just, like my brain was dead. Um, I would use pills to help hopefully like get me back on track. I'd fall off the bandwagon. I couldn't wait until my kids went to bed so that I could eat um, the large size bag of peanut butter M&M's, not like the meat, I'm talking about the largest size that you could buy, not the big party bags, because I don't think those were around back then actually. But anyway, the large size, I decided that maybe I should cut out chocolate because maybe that would make me uh, get better and then I'd be able to get my weight down. No, instead I would buy the big bags of powdered donuts and I'd eat those at night, every night and I would go to bed at a ridiculously late hour and then I would wake up at 6 to get my kids off to school or because they woke me up to which I would lay on the couch take diet pills take medication um, randomly starve myself those kind of things in hopes that I could just get back to where I was and uh, and then I would be so overwhelmed by the end of the day I would find myself going to the store, buying another bag of M&M's. And so I look back knowing how I felt and I did not feel happy or healthy. Like I was happy, like don't get me wrong, like I was I was grateful for where I was and I felt very blessed to be where I was, but I wasn't like truly happy because I did not feel healthy. So that's everything. Um I want you guys to know that you're not alone and also we are going to fall off the bandwagon. That's what my family calls it. We call our like our healthy lifestyle eating. We, we call it the bandwagon. You know, we fell off the bandwagon and I want you guys to know that, that it's okay if you fall off. You're not broken. You're not a loser. You're not stupid. You're not anything that is negative. You're human. You're normal. To air is human. You just get up and get back on. And take note of, of what had you falling off. And just keep trying. Like that's another, like one of my favorite words is try. Try, try, try. You know, if you keep trying, that says something, you know, and you think of like, the little engine that could, the little engine that said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And, you know, you can do it. And I don't know why I'm getting emotional. There's also this other little train book that talks about, like, the little caboose that, like, helped push the train. Have you guys read that one? Is it called The Little Caboose? It's this book. I can't even remember exactly, like, how it went. I just remember, like, every time I'd get to, like, the end of the book and I'd be like, <laughs> you know, this little kid's book. But it was something about how I think like the, the big engine, the engine in front cut out and there was a little engine on the caboose, I guess, I think. And, and the, the little caboose was able to push the engine. 
all the train and the re you know the whole train to uh, to where it needed to be. You know, and, and remember, like, we are one and we may seem small, but that doesn't mean we can't do great things and we can't do big things. And we can't do things that seem to be hard at first. We can become stronger. So that is everything. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Thank you guys so much uh, for everything. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a support and for being a positive part of my life. And, yeah. I'll talk to you later.